WNBA star Brittany Griner is free. She's back in the United States after nearly 10 months jailed in Russia. She was freed Thursday in a dramatic prisoner swap between the United States and Russia. As part of the deal, the Biden administration freed Victor Boot, a convicted Russian arms dealer who was serving a 25-year sentence. The prisoner swap took place on the runway of an airport in Abu Dhabi. Early this morning, a plane carrying Brittany Griner landed in San Antonio, Texas, where she'll undergo a medical evaluation at a military hospital. Brittany Griner had been held in Russia since February, when she was arrested at the Moscow airport for possessing a small amount of cannabis oil. President Biden announced the prisoner swap Thursday morning at the White House. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances. Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. Brittany Griner's wife, Sherelle Griner, also spoke at the White House. During a remark, she made reference to Paul Whelan, the American former Marine who remains jailed in Russia. Today, my family is whole, but as you all are aware, there are so many other families who are not whole. And so, BG's not here to say this, but I will gladly speak on her behalf and say that BG and I will remain committed to the work of getting every American home, including Paul, whose family is in our hearts today as we celebrate BG being home. We do understand that there are still people out here who are enduring what I endured the last nine months of missing tremendously their loved ones. So thank you, everybody, for your support. Um, and today is just a happy day for me and my family. So um, I'm going to smile right now. <laughs> um, thank you. The Biden administration had initially proposed a two-for-one prisoner swap involving both Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan, but that was rejected by Russia. On Thursday, Paul Whelan's brother David told CNN he supported Biden's decision to secure Brittany Griner's freedom. I'm absolutely supportive of it. I think to prolong the uh, punishment of one American in a foreign uh, hostage situation on the hope that you might be able to bring home two of them is absolutely the wrong call for the U.S. president to make. Uh, an American in that situation uh, who has a possibility of coming home, I think the U.S. president has to bring them home. And unfortunately for my brother and for our family, it's not our family member, but I think from the perspective of Americans, uh, mm. that's the right decision. We begin today's show with Dave Zirin, host of Edge of Sports podcast and sports editor for The Nation magazine, where his latest article is headlined, A Vindication for Agitation, Brittany Griner's Coming Home. Well, Brittany Griner is free, Dave Zirin. Were you surprised by the news yesterday and the speed with which she has come home to San Antonio, Texas? She is a—she uh, grew up in Houston. Talk about the significance of how you believe she was freed. Yeah, Amy, thanks so much for having me. When I heard that Brittany Griner was going to be freed, I was floored. Uh, I had tears in my eyes. Uh, my phone was blowing up about this. Obviously, I've been investigating and covering this story for months. And no, this was not something I expected, because earlier in that week, you heard that negotiations were again breaking down. And I think it's so important, as we discuss the ins and outs of this, that we don't lose the plot. And that's that Brittany Griner is coming home. Brittany Griner is going to be back with her family. Uh, Brittany Griner is going to be back with her family for the holidays, for goodness sakes. And we have to remember that this is a moment of celebration and a moment of joy during a time where celebration and joy are in short supply. And talk about, well, what your title was about, the agitation. Uh, who was there for her and who wasn't? Why you think she is free today? Yes, when Brittany Griner was first uh, imprisoned, when we first got word of it in late February and early March, uh, the response from the sports world, you can really characterize it as existing in two different lanes. In one lane, you had a sports world that is awash in racism, sexism, and homophobia. And Brit Brittany Griner is, of course, a, a black queer woman. And the amount of erasure and deliberate, deliberate ignoring of Brittany Griner's case was apparent to anybody who listens to sports radio or watches sports television. I mean, if it was Steph Curry or Tom Brady imprisoned overseas in a Russian prison, facing nine years of hard labor, I mean, the earth would have opened up. The cacophony would have been so loud. Yet with Brittany Griner, there was silence. There was another lane of people 
as well who love Brittany Griner, people in the WNBA and NBA communities who, on the advice from the State Department, were silent because the State Department said delicate negotiations are taking place, so we don't want any outcry about Brittany whatsoever. And that created this veil of silence and even shame about Brittany Griner being arrested. And then there was Sherelle Griner in all her heroism speaking out, saying, the heck with this silence. We need to shine light on this and raise Brittany Griner's name. So there is much more of an effort to agitate to make sure that Brittany Griner's name and Paul Whelan's name are at the top of the State Department's to-do list, at the top of Antony Blinken's to-do list. And that agitation grew and grew, both in the sports world and among fans. Uh, people made buttons and T-shirts and took them to games. Uh, the sports world could no longer be silent. Steph Curry mentioned uh, Brittany Griner at the ring ceremony for the Golden State Warriors. And the cacophony did start to grow. And I do believe that along with, frankly, uh, the fact that Russia is losing to Ukraine and Vladimir Putin felt like he needed a win of some kind, I think that's why this trade took place. So in one degree, you can say that the Ukrainian resistance is why Brittany Griner is coming home. Well, White House Press Secretary uh, Karine Jean-Pierre denied claims by the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia that they had any involvement in the mediation efforts that secured the release of Brittany Griner from the Russian labor prison camp. The only countries that negotiated uh, this deal were the United States and Russia. And there was no mediation uh, involved. We are grateful for the uh, UAE, as the president mentioned, as I am mentioning now, for facilitating uh, the use of their territory for the exchange to take place. Uh, we are also grateful to other countries, including Saudi Arabia, that released the issue of our wrongfully detained Americans with uh, Russian government. A joint statement by the UAE and Saudi Arabia released Thursday had said that Brittany Griner's release, quote, highlighted the important role played by the leaderships of the two brotherly countries in promoting dialogue between all parties. Dave. Yeah, I mean, so th this was a tremendous effort by all corners to get Brittany Griner home. And, and there is something that I think needs to be said about this that's so important. I mean, so many people on the right wing, I know you're going to talk about Victor Boot in the next segment. But my goodness, the fainting couches about doing this trade for Victor Boot when the U.S. is the biggest arms dealer in the world is a, is a little tough to swallow. But I know you're going to talk about that in the next segment. But the most important thing is that we fought for Brittany Griner to come home. And I know there are a lot of people out there who say, well, we have these problems in this country. Shouldn't we focus on them, about prisons, about the drug laws in this country? But we have to have a global perspective about prison abolition, about the war on drugs, and that's why Brittany Griner's freedom should be seen as a victory for anybody who gives a damn about social justice in this country. So you have this announcement yesterday at the White House, Sherelle Griner smiling ear to ear, uh, Brittany Griner's wife. And just hours later, uh, you have 39 Republicans joining with the Democrats in the House of Representatives, voting to support marriage equality. Um, at the same time in Russia, you have Putin on Monday, signing a fiercely anti-LGBTQ law into effect, making it dangerous to be LGBTQ in Russia. Can you talk about what Brittany Griner faced as a lesbian, as an African-American woman in Russia in prison? Well, according to reports by people who've been in the prison that she was going to be in for the next nine years, a labor camp in Mordovia, uh, the racism, the, uh, of course, anti-Americanism and the uh, homophobia are so intense that we can say that Brittany Griner's life would have been hell. And there's no saying that she would have even survived the next nine years. In addition, in Mordovia, we know that there are no medical services to be— we don't even know if Brittany Griner and her six-foot, eight-inch frame would have had a bed that she could sleep sleep in. Uh, that's what she was facing over the next nine years. So getting her home was about the fact that we don't know if she could have survived in such a situation. And I encourage people to, to read the words of Nadia Tol Tolkienakova uh, from Pussy Riot, who spent three years in the same Mordovian prison. It is absolutely chilling 
what Brittany Griner would have faced. And her coming home, I really do believe, is about saving her life, as well as returning her to her family. And finally, very quickly, Dave, on another subject, you're certainly following the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, the death of yet another worker and the response by the Qatari government that death is part of the life process. Can you respond? Yeah, yeah, shocking, disturbing. This is a World Cup that comes to us soaked in blood and dirt. Now, other World Cups have had their share of injustices, no question, but what's happening in Qatar is a crime against humanity. Dave Zirin, sports editor for The Nation magazine, host of the Edge of Sports podcast. We're going to link to his new article in The Nation magazine, A Vindication for Agitation, Brittany Griner's Coming Home. Go to democracynow.org. Next up, WNB star, NBA star Brittany Griner was freed in a dramatic prisoner swap in exchange for Victor Boot, the convicted Russian arms dealer. A lot has been made of him selling weapons to everyone from al-Qaeda to the Taliban. What about being paid millions of dollars by the United States. Stay with us.